Hello everybody, I hope you're having a good day and today I'm in a really good mood. You know, it's the first day of a new month and I've got a little bit of a challenge for you guys so yeah, I'm quite excited. We all know that like these days, these days, let's say that like, you know, the good old days, but these days we do eat a lot of processed food, we eat a lot of packaged food, a lot of food with added ingredients, you know, low carb, low calorie, low fat, but it's got a crap ton of sugar, artificial sweetness, chemicals, things that were made in a lab, things that you can't even pronounce, things that you've no idea what they are, where they came from, and things you shouldn't really be putting in your body. And I want to change that this month and I want to do an eat clean challenge and I really want you guys to get involved. I get asked all the time what do you mean by eat clean if I use it as a hashtag or if I talk about it in a recipe or a blog post or a video and essentially eating clean is staying away from all the processed crap that we have in our modern world you know we have so many advertisers like telling us buy this buy that and nine times out of ten the ingredients are shocking and they're full of fillers it's convenience food but it's not really convenient for anyone because it's kind of slowly killing us and it, you know eating clean just goes back to whole foods uh, you know real foods so fresh fruit fresh vegetables whole grain pasta like whole grain bread without all the sugar and regulators and you know preservatives and all that kind of stuff and just going back to proper home cooking, making things for yourself, not buying things out all the time and eating good things and knowing where those good things came from. So there are no hard and fast rules about it but to be honest for me eating clean is making things for myself, you know not going buying a jar of processed salsa that might have added salt and sugar levels and you know loads of preservatives that keep it sitting on the shelf for years in some cases. You know nobody needs to eat two year old salsa you know you can whip up a batch super quickly in your kitchen for really cheap and whack it in the freezer or in the fridge and use it and it's much nicer and much better for you and you get the added you know fun of making it as well and it can be fun getting rid of the you know diet drinks you know sugary soft drinks flavored sparkling water um you know any pasta jars pasta sauces curry sauces i mean how many people do you know that can make a great curry from a jar but they have no idea what's actually in the curry they don't know what they're eating they don't know where it was made how clean the place was like we just put so much trust in companies and just eat the the stuff and we don't even know where it came from and it's kind of crazy if you think about it i don't think we would do it with any other aspect of our lives but we do it with food and it's really bizarre anything with more than like five or six ingredients you know you should really look closely at what is in your food and if you do then you might be kind of surprised you know if you look at a loaf of white bread for example or even if you look at a loaf of whole grain bread if you look at a wholemeal loaf then usually the second ingredient is white flour it's not a whole grain loaf and then there's a whole load of salt sugars stabilizers regulators to keep your bread fresher for longer but you know why not just either make your own loaf or buy a fresh baked loaf and whack it in the freezer and you know or just buy a smaller amount of bread I don't know it's it's kind of going back to more I don't want to say old-fashioned but kind of going back to a more traditional way of looking at food it's also a lot more fun because you can really bond over food and engage with the kitchen and like not just treat it as this place where you just reheat something in the microwave but you treat it as somewhere that you have fun and you know you it can bring people together as a family or as a group of friends, you know, getting a group of friends together to cook a meal together. I mean, how often do you do that or do you just ring for a pizza? You know, it's just kind of changing your habits. Just basically eating a lot more fruits and vegetables, knowing what's in your food, checking the ingredients, knowing where things come from and making your own things, you know, and you might surprise yourself with how much you enjoy it and how, you know, how much you learn about food. I just want to address three things that people say to me a lot or I read in other people's comments on their videos and that I hear banded about all the time, all the time as to why people don't want to eat clean or they don't want to make things from scratch and I'll tell you how you can work around it and make it work for you. So the first thing that I hear is that people you know their parents cook for them and they don't have control over what they're eating they don't have control over what is bought at the supermarket and they have to eat what they're given they're under 18 or under 16 and they live at home and they just have to eat what their parents give them and I get this a lot with people that want to be vegetarian and I've got a whole other video on that which I'll link below but I get this a lot from like younger subscribers and unfortunately like your parents what your parents say you have to do you know you have to like abide by those rules 
But I think a lot of it can be in the way that you kind of speak to your parents. You know, if you spoke to your parents and said, oh, what are we having for dinner tonight? And it's a microwaveable lasagna or something like that. Or a lasagna made with a pasta sauce with like stuff that's, you know, not that great for you in it. Maybe if you said to your parents, hey, you know, I'd like to make the pasta sauce tonight or next week, you know, if you give them enough time, like if you know when your family are going shopping, don't do it in the supermarket, you know, because there's nothing worse than that as a parent when you've got a budget to stick to, not that I'm a parent, but you know what I mean. There's nothing worse than like having someone like throwing things in the trolley and they're obviously, they're not going to be receptive to it, but if you do this before and you sit down and you write a little list and figure out, you know, go online and see how much things cost on the Tesco, Sainsbury's, Asda website, whatever supermarket you use, wherever you buy your food, figure out how much it would cost and just say, hey, I'd love to make this pasta sauce. It's actually a third of the price if we bought the Dolmio one. So how about you let me make that meal? And trust me, if you put it to them in a good way, if you put it to your parents that you'll be saving money, and if you put it to your parents that you will be taking over a part of the cooking, they'll probably be so glad to have you actually lending a hand and kind of saving them money that they'll say yes. If your parents are not receptive or there's nothing you can do, then just control the things that you can control. So if your parents give you money to buy some food for lunch at school, just try and do it there. Incorporate clean eating into that, you know, and, and you know, control what you can and make the right changes for you. You don't have to go the whole hog and tell your parents, like, I'm not eating anything unless it's organic, you know, just do what you can. And then when you get older and you're earning your own money, you can do what you want. The second thing that a lot of people say to me is that eating healthy costs too much money, which it can do. It can cost you a lot of money <laughs> to eat healthily and to eat organic and to do the right thing. It can cost a lot of money, but it can also be pretty cheap. You've just got to be really, really savvy with it, okay? So figure out, like, do your budgeting and, you know, the first few weeks that you do it, you'll probably have to put a lot more time into planning it, maybe the first week even. And, you know, if you do online shopping and you save your basket then it's so easy once you get into the habit and you know okay this this and this makes such a meal it's so easy then the following weeks to just replicate that and you'll know where to go in the supermarket you'll know what to do and when you get into the habit and the routine of it really doesn't cost that much money at all. Fruits, you know, if you want to make smoothies and things like that. Buying berries, you know, they can be like three pounds for a little punnet of berries, but if you buy a huge bag of frozen berries, uh, frozen vegetables, like I can't tell you the amount of time I've gone into like farm foods, Iceland, you know, shops that usually you would associate with kind of frozen food that isn't the best for you. Go into those shops and I'm telling you, they have so much vegetable stuff frozen they have like frozen spinach frozen peas frozen you know mix for kind of like stir fries they have so many frozen vegetables and frozen fruits in there you won't believe it and they're cheap they're really really cheap so whack them all in your freezer and you know if you have to do it that way do it that way and a lot of the times the nutrients are better in those things because they're kind of frozen when they're picked and they're not being flown towards and all that kind of stuff but you know that's one way to do it and I'll do a whole video on this if you want me to do kind of a low cost way to eat healthily but the freezer is your friend making meals in huge batches and then freezing them labeling them so you've got a lasagna and you know all that kind of stuff will save you a lot of money and a lot of time and that leads me on to the third thing a lot of people say that you know, I don't have the time, I'm working, I have children, I have responsibilities and it's just so much more convenient for me to whack a pizza in the oven that's pre-packed. I don't really have the time to be making things from scratch. Oh, I wish I had that luxury, it's fine for you because you don't have kids and stuff. I can appreciate that it might be harder for people with a lot more responsibilities or, you know, a demanding job and demanding children. It can be hard to like balance your time but Trust me, there is a way that you can do it. It kind of comes in bursts, but I'll have like a really busy month and then I'll have a really quiet month. And I'll be working in the daytime and then I'll have events and meetings in the evening sometimes. The freezer is your friend and the slow cooker is your friend. My greatest thing that I've bought since I moved to London was a slow cooker. I bought a slow cooker tagine combination. It cost me about 15 quid from like a cash and carry and it's the best thing that ever happened to me. Whack everything in there, leave it for three hours and it cooks the meal for you. So things like pasta sauces, curry, I made a Thai green curry yesterday while I was doing work. I whacked it all in there and when my boyfriend Matt got home there was a Thai green curry waiting for us both and I'd done zero a done zilch, it's done it all for me. And I, my recommendation would be to switch it on when you're watching the TV in the evening or you go, you're do, looking after the kids, doing something. So switch it on and at nine o'clock before you go to bed, just 
put it in a Tupperware, put it in the fridge and that's your meal for the next night. Or put it in the freezer and do big batches and on a Sunday make soups, make meals that you can freeze, bag things up in little individual bags and put them in the freezer and you can even get your kids to kind of help you with it. Um, I know coming from someone who doesn't have children, it's easier said than done, I know that. There are definitely ways that you can get around it. I also think another key thing to doing this eat clean thing and not finding it too difficult is isolating the things that you have trouble with. So for me, I have a tendency to like sweet drinks, okay? I, I try to drink water, but every now and again, like once every couple of weeks, I'll just crave like Diet Coke or Fanta or something like that and I'll go and buy a bottle and then I'll feel terrible about it and I hate how it makes me feel and then I'll feel like I've ruined it all and I just have this horrible relationship with it then. Video coming up on like how to make soft drinks at home that will completely curb any cravings for those kinds of drinks. So I'll share that with you soon. And the other thing for me that's really hard is ketchup, okay? I've been obsessed with ketchup for a long time. Like I've had a long term relationship with ketchup since I was a kid and even when I buy like the low salt and low sugar ones, I do consume quantities of ketchup that are not normal. Uh, if you ask anyone that I know, they'll, they'll confirm this to you. Um, I can pretty much have it with everything. So yeah, that's, that's something I struggle with. I'm currently in the process of tweaking a homemade ketchup recipe and also a homemade barbecue sauce recipe. So those are my ways of of tweaking those things and getting around it. So saying, okay, I don't want to cut out ketchup, I don't, I have a dependency on it, I know that, but switching it for a healthier alternative. Um, if, if you've got things that you really struggle with, if you love Mexican food, if you love pizza, if you've got anything that you struggle with, leave me a comment below and if I can, or if I can find someone that can, I will try and recreate that for you in a healthy way and a clean way and make things a little bit easier for you. So please let me know what you struggle with below and I'll get my thinking cap on for videos. So this month my channel is going to be crammed with recipes and tips and ways to kind of cleanse your diet and still eat the foods that you like. Um, so I hope you're excited about that, I'm really excited about it and getting in the kitchen. But I don't just want this to be about my channel, so I want you guys to share recipes amongst each other. Um, I will have a hashtag here, it's going to be Eat Clean March, so please, you know, post on my Facebook page, tweet me, um, and use the hashtag because then you can search and someone else might have found an amazing website with full of clean recipes. They might have done their own blog post, their own video, you know, you can share tips and motivation and recipes and all that kind of stuff. So I really want this to be interactive and you don't just have to rely on my channel for recipes. If there's something that you find out there and you want to share it with everybody then just use the hashtag and we can all do a little bit of a search. And if you do tweet anything with the hashtag and I particularly love any recipes, I'll whack them on my Facebook page, I'll retweet them we can all just kind of share it together so I'm really excited about this I'm making a little promise to myself to do 30 minutes of exercise every single day as well um, most days I'm gonna make that the 30 day shred so it's a little bit more intense but you know anything from brisk walking but that's just a personal thing that I'm doing on top of the eating clean and feel free to join me in that as well so I really hope you're excited about this like I said just take it step by step and do what you can and from the moment that you watch this video just make a promise to yourself to eat clean for the rest of the month and um, yeah, I'm really excited to see how you guys get on with it. I'm really excited to read your recipes and tips and chat to you guys about this on Twitter and Facebook. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye guys.